اهلا بكل الذين ينضموا للاستماع الى راديو بلدي او الراديو العربي الامريكي ويعنى بقضايا العرب في المهجر. برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعه من الثامنه وحتى التاسعه صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر عبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام. صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا. Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Hussein. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Hussein. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by the Ziad Brothers, and now your host for today, Ray Hanania. And welcome to uh, the Arab Daily News Radio here on U.S. Arab Radio. I'll be here every second Friday of the month. And that'll be easy because at least for this Friday and next Friday, it'll be simple. Next Friday that I'll be on is uh, March 13th, which is Friday the 13th again, just like today. So no big deal. But our first rebroadcast here... Uh, returning to uh, uh, Layla's show, Radio Ballady, and UNC Arab Radio is a privilege for me. I had fun last week. Um, we're broadcast here every second Friday of the month at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on WNZK 690 a.m. in Detroit, Michigan, in the region, Ohio, and Windsor, Canada, and on WDMV 700 a.m. in Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland. Our call-in number here. If you want to join the conversation, it's 248-557-3300. Our producer is Adam, and we're happy to take your calls. And, uh, of course, we podcast everything. So this show, once it's done, will be podcast and available on iTunes, as well as off the ArabDailyNews.com website. Joining me this morning is a good friend of mine, Rush Darwish. Rush is a radio talk show host in Chicago. Um, at the same radio station where I broadcast at 14.50 a.m. and also live on YahalaVoice.com. His show is broadcast every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Um, it, but not only does he do radio, he's also engaged in the community, sponsoring fundraisers regularly for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund and includes organizing Team Palestine to run marathons throughout Chicagoland for the PCRF. His website is riseupshow.com. Rush also produces video broadcast programming, and like many of us in this country, where Arabs and Muslims sometimes are not treated with respect. Uh, we all recognize that we need to engage news media and communicate better in this country to change the American perceptions of Arabs. We're going to be talking about many topics, but this morning... How can we not talk about the grisly slaughter of three Arabs in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, on Tuesday night? Welcome to the show, Rush. How you doing? Ray, good morning. I've seen better days, but uh, all is well. Yeah, this, uh, listen, this uh, massacre, you know, I call it a slaughter. It's kind of terrible. I mean, tell me what you think about it when you heard about it. What's, the, I mean, did you get paranoid that they're beating the doors down trying to kill us? Um, is this just uh, one of those things that happens in a country that's filled with crime? Where is it between those two extremes? That's a fair question, Ray. I don't think there's any doubt this was a, a heinous hate crime. Uh, a man who targeted three, uh, not just individuals, he targeted three Muslims, and uh, he had a plan of attack. This was not some random killing off the street. I think uh, some media outlets have reported as a, a dispute over parking. Uh, this, is, to me, is an insult. It's embarrassing that anybody would say this. When a man uh, shoots three beautiful Americans, uh, execution style, one, two, and three, this is a hate crime. And I think it's a wake-up call for Muslims, not just in Chapel Hill, but for Muslims all over the United States. Although we need to live our lives, but I think we all, unfortunately, have to keep our guard up because there are some people out there that are watching us, and unfortunately... Uh, at any given moment, somebody might strike. It's sad, but this is how it is at this moment. Yeah, and you know, a lot of uh, the place where we debate and discuss these days, not just us, but the rest of America, is on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I've been taking a lot of beating from friends. 
on Facebook, Americans, non-Arab, non-Muslim, um, who say, hey, Ray, uh, why are you, you know, raising the issue of how would we react, you know, if this had been a Muslim killing three white people? Um, I think people would go crazy in this country, but it was a white American, and I say Christian, even though he's an atheist, his atheism is from his Christian religion, you know, because there are many Muslims in the Middle East who you could almost describe as atheists who are quote-unquote Islamic in the views of the West, and they would say, oh, it's not fair, you know, this is an isolated incident, he's a crazy person, it's not an act of terrorism. I mean, with all that out there, how do you talk to people and say, wait a minute, this isn't just an isolated incident, this is an act of terrorism against Arabs and Muslims? Some people are in denial, especially the non-Arab, non-Muslim. They're basically telling you, this isn't a problem, you're making it a problem. Right. And it's easy. It's easy for a Christian or Caucasian male or female uh, to say this. But as a Muslim, as an Arab American, we pay attention to details as to how things are. And you mentioned social media. I mean, social media has exposed what people feel about Muslims, whether they're right or whether they are wrong, um, but very, very powerful stuff in a hateful way uh, that attacks Muslims, that uh, makes Muslims look like they're lower or inferior. Um, so... The fact is, they don't pay attention to the details like the way I do. So I see things completely differently. And uh, clearly, media outlets as well, such as Fox News, will do whatever means necessary to make it out to be that it was just a random crime, that it was over a parking dispute. But you know and I know what the truth is, and it comes from our gut, and it comes from our instinct. Uh, very similar to the black community in the 60s uh, during the civil rights movements, or even till now, they yeah. know when a hate crime is versus... Uh, some sort of a random murder. Uh, when I found out and I read that these three uh, Americans were killed, uh, I didn't look at it as, oh, boy, how about that parking dispute? Your right. heart and your soul knew right from the get-go that this was a hate crime. Yeah, I agree. I, well, when I, you know, I happened to get up early, uh, you know, because I'm an old man. Unlike you, Rush, you're a young dude. I'm, I'm an old guy. I get up at 3, 4 in the morning sometimes. And I'm going through the news, and I and I was shocked when I read this. And I was able to, I started researching it, and and then I wrote something about it. What really strikes me the most about this is this, and this is why I'm a little the resistance that Americans have to acknowledge that there's an anti-Arab, anti-Muslim hate in this country, not just by isolated individuals, but I think in the mainstream society it's deep down and it rises the more crazy you get in this country but what really struck me was okay let's assume that there was a point of contact over a parking issue that you know imagine if that happened in chicago right rush where we got dibs <laughs> there'd be you a know, lot of dead bodies right the rest of the world knows what dibs are but it's like preserving your parking space during a snowstorm yeah. but what struck me right away was this the guy gets in a fight over a parking space. He has a gun. Why did he get the gun? He just got it like a couple of weeks ago, I think. He goes out there, gets in a fight, then goes to the house and not only shoots the man he's arguing with, but he shoots the man's wife and he shoots the wife's sister. Now, and they're both hijabin, which means, you know, they wear the hijab. They're, uh, you know, I don't consider them conservative. I just think they're typical Muslims. You know, a hijab is not a burqa. To me, that's a hate crime. How do you not, you know, view it as a hate crime? You have to be so vicious to murder two women when you see these people, even the guy. You look, these are nice people. Nothing but hate. Yeah, the, the link, the only link, if I'm going to look deep into this, is that this killer, and that's what he is, um, this devil uh, basically was looking for a reason, anything, to engage with these three individuals in order to start something. And that's the only link with that parking spot, is that he needed something, something to interact with them to lead his way to kill them. And that is it. This is, I mean, this is a, a foolish claim. And yeah. uh, it comes back to what I'm saying is that, as a Muslim, I face the reality that uh, this is a Christian-driven country, and we also have to be real with the fact that you know, 9-11 still sticks. It sucks for people like me. 
but people use 9-11 as their way of saying, hey, wait a second, you know, don't talk about hate crimes. Look what happened in 9-11. And they'll say, your, your people, your people killed yeah. 3,000 of our people, so, so we don't want to hear it. And that's right. why, this is why, unfortunately, sadly, we don't see America today uh, feeling this, this nationwide sympathy for these three individuals. You do have a faction of America, dare say over 50%, non-Muslims, who are, are looking at these three individuals, and sadly, deep down inside, they're saying, well, you know what? This is, this is what happens for what you did. Right, yeah. This it's is, almost you know, like nobody, not everybody it, right? will say, but, like, but social media has exposed it. Now, remember, social media for you, Ray, and for myself, it has displayed our identity of who we are. Yeah. Um, before that, you know, it was all kind of like private. Nobody really knew what people thought. Now right. we're, we're getting to see, I, I know how you feel, Ray. You know how I feel, and I know how, you know, a lot of other people feel. And I think that uh, nobody really wants to acknowledge it, but that's why we are in the situation we're in. You know, people say the Chapel Hill police didn't react quickly. Um, and, you know, there could be a lot of reasons. But, yeah, th there, is, there is bigotry, and there are people who, when they see this happen, this is really sad. But they don't say poor families, you know, look at these three young, young, beautiful kids who are just trying to make, you know, live the American dream. No, the, the, the sad part is people look at them and say, you know what, Th this is what you get. Almost like revenge. There are people today that are, that are hailing this killer. And this, is the, this is the society we live in, and uh, it's tragic, it's sad, uh, but uh, this is how it is, and we have to accept it. And we have, as a Muslim community, we have to be better and we have to rise above it. Now, let me. This is a side issue, a little bit, obviously, because they definitely were Muslim, um, but I don't view it as you know. Uh, they, I don't think they were just killed because they were Muslim. I, I, you know, they're Arab also, and I, I know there's a hatred against. And I'm not nitpicking with you, Rush. I'm just raising a point because there are a lot of non-Muslim Arabs um, of and non-Muslim Middle East people who are targeted by these same haters in this country and it's a yes. very difficult thing you know to talk about because it usually creates a tension in our community i used to say arabs and christians and muslims and a lot of people would say oh ray why do you keep talking about christians and muslims and i it was i tried to explain to them that because i'm a christian arab and people look at me and think i'm muslim which is fine but they treat me the same way so when we speak out against Muslim hate crimes or anti-Muslim hate crimes, you know, there are a lot of Christians who don't feel they're part of that outrage that's being expressed. Do you have a feeling on that, or is that a concern at all, or do you think that's just being selfish? Well, there's no doubt, Ray, that the Christian Arabs, the, uh, the Pakistanis, the people of, of Hindu descent, they are all bunched into this because yeah. people who have hate don't analyze uh, right. They have their image of who these people are in their heads, and that fits a wide majority of people, from Palestinian to Indian to Iranian or Persian, uh, and the list goes on and on, Christian, Muslim, and that's how it is. This is, this is not just an attack on people who are olive skin or are Palestinians yeah. or if you're just a Muslim. This is an attack on um, a, a brown race, if you will, you know, if you're dark complected, you fit that stereotype. You know, you're you're bunched into it, and religion doesn't matter. I, so I think you're it's right. Americans, not in all honesty, a lot of them are just uneducated. For the most educated country in the world, they're very uneducated. We're on the phone with uh, my friend and radio talk show host. This guy is really shaking things up in Chicagoland. And I'll tell you, you can listen to him on Wednesdays at 4.30 on yahalavoice.com. We're going to take a quick call right here at 248-557-3300 from one of our callers, and then we're going to take a break right after, and we'll continue the discussion with Rush, uh, Rush Darwish and even talk about uh, Franklin Graham and his hateful video uh, and comments that he's been making. Uh, caller, you're on the air here at the Arab Daily News at U.S. Arab Radio. Ray. Hi, caller. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning, Mr. Rush. Uh, is this Mr. Ray? Uh, what's the last name? I didn't catch it. Hanania. Ray Hanania. Oh, Mr. Ray Hanania. Of course, you are very well known. Mr. Hanania, I want to uh, uh, 
address my question to yes. you and to Mr. Rush Darwish. Uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Darwish. Nice to meet you. Welcome yeah, to the thank show. Thank you. I agree with you 100%. Is the, the, the brown is the skin. Yes. I am as a Christian Iraqi, and I want to address it, but you guys address it, and I respect your point. We all become a target for the hate crime uh, in the USA. Uh, first of all, my, my heart uh, go to the family of those uh, three uh, beautiful, innocent, uh, young uh, students who they were like the flowers, who they just blooming. My heart to all the Middle Eastern uh, community about this uh, hate uh, crime. Uh, the person who committed, I believe he was sick, and yeah. he was a criminal, like you said. Uh, my thing, uh, Mr. Darwish, over here, uh, during the Gulf War, I just to bring it an example, like the criminal uh, doesn't make a difference between Jerry as a Christian or a Ray or, or a Rush uh, as a Muslim. We all become a target. I was uh, sitting on a traffic light signal, and suddenly someone asked me about the time. When I gave him the time, uh, I lower my window, uh, just do him a favor. This person, when he heard my accent, he followed me for about three, four miles. He tried to probably do some harm, uh, physical yeah. harm to me. So that was just an example of the hate crime. It doesn't uh, know the difference if I was a Christian Arab or Muslim Arab or Buddhi or Mandai or Sabi. So my point is, over here, I want to raise my voice to all our leaders uh, uh, and the activists and uh, the, 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 the civil rights, and especially the uh, president of, they call themselves, uh, Arab, uh, Muslim, uh, Christian organization. They've been at uh, one uh, 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 organization to another every day, more and more, but they don't have no strategic, no plan to yeah. help the community. All they do, they are helping their own agenda to climb to the position on your shoulder and my shoulder, and, uh, and, and, and I want also raise my voice to our respectable uh, uh, religious leader in uh, churches, in masjid, in mosque, in Knesset, in anywhere, to tell them, please, please talk about love, about peace, about the humanity, and to reduce any kind of violence and killing against the innocent people because we don't want to make uh, uh, the religion uh, to be a problem. Let's work together and let's raise our voice. And thank you, Mr. Rush, for thank your work. And thank you, Mr. Ray Hanina. God bless you. And God bless our community. And God bless our home country in the Middle East and our great country here, the United States of America. Listen, Carl, thank, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I, I love it. Thank you. God bless. You know, one thing, Rush, that we always get uh, are good calls here in uh, Detroit and Washington. We get a lot of calls, so i got to get you on the show more because, uh, um, actually, Rush and I think a lot alike. He's more popular than me, so I'm kind of glomming on to him. You know, I want to I crawl on his shoulders on and, and take advantage of his popularity because he's the, he's the guy that people love at the high school. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know about that. Listen, Ray. we're going to take a, a quick grown, break I'm here. A grown, I'm a grown yeah. man like you, Ray. Come on now. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break here at WNZK, U.S. Arab Radios, the Arab Daily News Radio, Radio Ballady. Uh, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue the discussion with our guest, Rush Darwish. We'll be right back right after these messages. Jumana K. Ruse. You've seen her images on giant billboards across the metro. Jumana K. Ruse. You've seen her images on buses across the city. Now get to know Jumana K. Ruse. Most people who sit in my office across from my desk 
are hurting on so, so many levels. One thing people do not know about medical malpractice is that the statute of limitation, meaning the time that you have to bring suit against a doctor, a hospital, is two years. In medical malpractice, that's a very, very short period of time. Not every lawyer is an advocate, but every lawyer should be an advocate. Let Jumana Kairos protect your rights. Call the law offices of Jumana Kairos at 1-866-YOUR-RIGHTS, extension 100, or visit yourrights.com. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. And welcome back to WNZK AM 690 in Greater Detroit and WDMV AM Radio 700 and in uh, the Greater Washington, D.C. area, live on radio with my guest, Rush Darwish, um, here at Layla El Hosseini's great radio melody. Um, her program is Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern in Detroit. Uh, of course, in Chicago, we're one hour ahead. And I want to give a shout out also to, let's see, we got an intern in the studio who's helping out. And I believe that young people should be acknowledged. Noor Galley, we want to thank you for helping with the radio show along with Adam, our uh, uh, technician and producer who is running the show from inside the studio. On the line with me is Russ, Rush Darwish. He's a, a radio talk show host at RiseUpShow.com. You can get all the information for his show broadcast in Chicago and online at yahalavoice.com. I Rush, did you get a chance to hear and or watch the video of Graham uh Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham? Uh it turned out that about 4 weeks before this massacre, um the uh Duke University, which is right near Chapel Hill, the University of North Carolina and Duke University are right in that area around Durham, North Carolina. They, they were going to allow Muslims to, to do the uh, call to prayer once uh, a week on Fridays at 1 o'clock. It was going to be three minutes long. And uh, Franklin Graham got upset and started ranting about uh, that Allah is not God. Allah is some demon. You know, Allah is the word for craziness, blah, blah, blah. This guy's nuts. Um, and he forced Duke University to back off of this call to prayer. Now, to me, a call to prayer is just like ringing the bells at Christmas time at a church. And I'll tell you, on a Sunday morning when I was growing up, church bells were ringing, ringing like crazy, not just for three minutes, but for ten minutes. Had you seen that at all, Rush? Oh, did we lose Rush? Um, I'm here. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm did here, you? Ray, and I was just saying that uh, I, uh, I'm aware of the story of what happened at Duke. And yeah. you know, there, and, and this just goes to show that, uh, and I understand that, and I accept that, that uh, we live in a country where, you know, Christianity, Christianity reigns supreme, and there are uh, people who are religious in the Christian base that uh, see Islam as a threat. And a threat can, it, could, it can branch out into so many different directions of where they see that threat. Some they see it as, well, it's one of the, it's the fastest growing religion in, in the world, so they see it as, you know, we can't, we can't support this. Some see it as, well, you know, Muslims are crazy or they're evil. But the fact is, here in the United States, uh, people have a problem with Islam. And uh, sadly, it's, uh, you know, like Mr. Graham and very renowned figures that uh, try and denounce Islam. But uh, we need to keep moving forward. You know, the Muslim community needs to keep pushing and to have the call for, for, for prayer because you just said it. That's all is what it is. It's, it's a call yeah. for prayer. Nothing yeah, more, and doesn't nothing it, isn't there, doesn't this kind of create an atmosphere, though, where a crazy person, you know, or a lot of crazy people who are, you know, doesn't it feed the hatred of Arabs and Muslims? You know what I mean? Doesn't, what, what, I hold, personally, I hold uh, Franklin Graham partially responsible for fueling this environment of hatred out there, 
um, and with some of the ugly stuff that he says. And I think he needs to be accountable. People like him who say these crazy things about Muslims, who attack Arabs and Muslims who don't, um, you, you know what I mean? Uh, there's no, there's no doubt that they have to be held accountable. But uh, who's going to hold them accountable? Uh, our government has also turned a, you know, a blind eye. And I think the government and Duke, they have one thing in common. Uh, once the heat gets on them, once there are figures that talk about Islam, uh, they don't say, "Wait a second, this is America. We believe in justice. We believe in equal rights." Uh, politicians, yeah. Duke, they start thinking about, "Oh my gosh, we can't affect our donations." We can't affect our funds. If this gets out and we get negative publicity, uh, you know, we could lose money. The boosters could lose money. Our sports programs could lose money. We can't take this bad publicity. So this is what's happening is that when there are people, when there are media outlets that scream against, you know, Islam, uh, the people who you want to stand up and rise up for justice and rise up for religion and rise up for the Arab community, they back away because they, they fear what could happen to them, you know. How is this going to affect me? People become very, very selfish. It's sad, but it's the truth. Let's take another phone call here at uh, the Arab Daily News Radio on U.S. Arab Radio and Radio Ballad. You're on the line, caller, with Rush Darwish and Ray Hanania. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Now, now what, what do you just... think of this whole issue of these poor people that were massacred in Chapel Hill? I mean, it's kind of shocking. These are just students. They weren't. You know, they were doing. The guy organized a, uh, a feed the poor night at downtown Durham for seventy five homeless people. You know, this is um, the guy that was killed. It's just mm -hmm. so sad. It is, and it's 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 shocking. I think is the word that a lot of us have been using. And I'm a college student, and it it hits home for different people in different ways depending on on who you are, and like me as a Muslim college student and as an activist worker on my campus, and I see the work that they've done and the great that they could have done for this world is also another factor of where I'm sitting home and the fact that I'm 21 and, and, and I walk around with my headscarf on my religion is very only shown on, 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 in the clothing that I wear has another effect on it. And the fact that they were so young, I think, yeah. and it's just... and. Yeah, I think that. You, have on, you been discriminated against? Have you sensed, you know, not just people looking at you? Because the Americans have a strange sense of, you know, don't look at me, but they love to look at everybody else. I, I get that. But do you get a sense of sometimes fear when when some people are looking at you or saying stuff oh, to you? Do you get worried? Um, absolutely. I thankfully haven't had a a strong incident where I Good. felt endangered or anything or, or at risk but i do feel a sense of it's in the back of your head type of thing where you know that that these are being um that these are being uh broadcasted in the media and um these thoughts are going through people's mind it's definitely something that i think about all the time but but having someone actually approach me or do anything like that i think we have i live in a very diverse community i go to a diverse uh campus so all that right. plays a well, role listen, in it, but not everyone is as lucky. Well, listen, first of all, thank you for listening to the show. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for calling. I mean, the one thing that we can do is, as Arabs and Muslims, one, we need to come together as a community, um, Muslim, Christian Arabs, Arabs, whatever, and two, we need to network in communications. And I have to, I want to introduce you to Rush Darwish. Rush is doing some great things in Chicago, and we need to support his radio show, um, mm -hmm. So if you get a chance, just, you know, go to his website at riseupshow.com, learn more about him and help spread the word so people will listen, you know, to his yeah. show too. Because yeah, if if we listen to each other and we even have these discussions, you know, Americans are going to listen. Don't you think Rush and maybe they'll adjust their attitudes of, oh, this was an individual incident. What are you guys screaming about? Right. Yeah, there's, actually, yeah, there's no doubt. Actually, um playing off what you just said me for there was a group of individuals that are on campus that ha, we've decided to respond to what happened um because we feel like just the negligence that's been taking um a swarm in the media let alone a proactive role in showing what had ha occurred in this terrible act but also who these three students were and the lives that they led and what they could have done and we feel like to educate and to spread who they were and and the good that they could have done for this world but also take a part in 
just completely dismantling this Islamophobia that's been fed in through the media and, and into these viewers to just kind of bridge gaps and find that support system. Um, we are, uh, it's our responsibility now because if... What school do you go to? I go to Eastern Michigan University. Oh, that's great. Keep up the great work. Thank yeah. you. And it's just, um, just to kind of do a spiel here. Um, that's all right. We want, we want to kind of start this movement. Um, it's, have you heard of the ride with me that, uh, happened in Australia? Absolutely. That kind of, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It just brought the, brought the entire complete, like, Everyone in Australia came together for this one hashtag, this one movement. We kind of want to play off that with something called Walk With Me and basically how no one should fear um, having to get to one point A to point B or walking on a college campus for their face or wearing their face on their outwardly for everyone to see or, or their race, let alone just the, the, who the, their religion. And um, it's gonna, we're just going to constitute um, different organizers to hold banners of this hashtag um, and try to get people to to walk with us, and and try to try to establish that 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 thought in their minds that you know you walking us from point A to point B is seems like nothing, but we have students now who fear that walk, especially depending on the time and depending on what's being said on the news, and we just need um, support for that to kind of take off. And we're trying to reach out to different schools, different organizations, different cities. So we could launch it at the same time, so it can kind of turn into this kind of movement to, as a response. Because we need it's a it's a very hateful, violent crime. We need to respond correctly in a peaceful way and let people know, you know, that this is this is what needs to be done. We can't have that happening. All right, thank you for calling. Great job. Really, thank you for listening. And and seriously, we need to network. You know, even though you live in the greater Detroit, we live in greater Chicago. Uh, Arabs well, and Muslims need to do a better job of connecting with each other, absolutely. and and not we don't have to create new things to do it. We have a lot of great things. This radio show with Layla Al Hosseini, Rush Darwish in Chicago. His website is riseupshow.com. Thank you so much, caller. Um, we you. have to take a quick break again here at the bottom of the hour on uh, WNZK. 690 AM in Greater Detroit and WDMV AM 700 in Greater Washington, D.C. My guest on the line is Rush Darwish. We're going to talk a little bit more with him um, after we take this break. So we'll be right back here at the Arab Daily News Radio right after these messages. Ziad Brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Life for Relief and Development is a nonprofit charity that has been providing humanitarian aid and development to people and communities regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background for over 22 years. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life rushes to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Life also has development projects that provide medical relief, water purification, educational programs, relief for orphans, and much more. Your help and support can greatly improve these efforts. All donations are tax deductible. For more information, please visit our website at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's lifeusa.org, 248-424-7493. And we're back here at the Arab Daily News Radio. My guest on the line is uh, Rush Darwish, and we're talking about this uh, Chapel Hill slaughter. The Chapel Hill shooting is the hashtag on Twitter. Um, final question for uh, Rush, and then uh, we'll we'll go to Noor. I want to get her perspective, too. But let me just ask Rush real quick about the news media. I, I was just on Google News, and there's not even a story. You know, out of 40 stories, the top stories in the country, uh, Chapel Hill massacre, slaughter has kind of been pushed to the side. Uh, if this had been anything else, it would be going on for months. 
and elected officials would be screaming about how we need to pass legislation to control those Muslims or those Arabs. What do you? What's your sense um, of the way the media has been treating this? Uh, the media uh, basically uh, has made it very clear that uh, they try and go by the pulse of their audience. And if you're Fox News, for example, um, this is not something they would want to cover on a regular basis because their audience does not want this. So I'm taking it from, and you're in the media as well, Ray, I'm taking it from a business uh, yeah. standpoint. It's, it's, it's sad, it's unfair, it's unjust. Right, they, in other but, words, but, uh, too much of this turns off their readership and they get pushback, in other words. Yeah. So for them, it's an economic yeah, decision. The and a little racism, though, right, isn't it? I mean, oh, a lot of the no reporters, how many Arab the, reporters work at newspapers and in the media? Talk about a lack of diversity, right? Yeah, there's a serious racial undertone. It's uh, always difficult to prove, but we know that there's a racial undertone. The only thing that we can do is what this young lady's doing at her college, yes. is that the outreach has to continue. It cannot be a five-day. It cannot be a reactive measure. It must stay proactive. Uh, we've got to continue connecting. We have to continue uh, the Muslim, the Arab community, um, basically anybody who feels that they're targeted wrongly because of their skin, uh, their skin color, needs to continue to be proactive in their community and to continue to do things that are outreach and to keep this this story alive because they don't just represent these three individuals just don't represent themselves in Chapel Hill. They represent all Americans. They represent yeah. you. They represent me. And we have to keep this story alive because God knows you cannot rely on Fox News or some of these media outlets. Uh, and I and before I let you go, one, Rush, they just, they any just events care. coming up? Because you organize a lot of stuff in the Arab and Muslim community in Chicago. Those marathons, uh, fundraisers for the Palestine Children Relief Fund. Uh, you do even the Mekluba Bowl. Can't why if you had done Grape Leaves Bowl, I might have overcome my dislike of uh, a bowling and bowled <laughs> with you. But you know the Mekluba Bowl, I can only eat it once in a while. But uh, you know, because uh, I can't stand those, uh, what are those little white, uh, what's that stuff in Mekluba? Um, you know, I'm like you. I'm, I'm indifferent <laughs> towards Mekluba. My family loves it. Uh, I used to have it every Sunday for 19 years straight. So, uh, you know, I've now moved to lasagna. So, you so know, someone will tell us here. I'm sure someone but will that. call in and tell us. But Rush Darwish, my guest, great guy. Please visit his website at riseupshow.com to get more information and uh, listen to his radio show on Wednesdays um, at 4.30 on yahalavoice.com. It's a great show. Rush, thank you so much for joining hey, us today. Thank you right? so much. I really appreciate it. To keep up the great work. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. This is right, uh, Ray Hanania here at the Arab Daily News Radio on U.S. Arab Radio and uh, Radio Ballady, uh hosted and organized by Layla El Husseini. Let's go to the phones real quick, and then I want to talk to Noor, who is a young Muslim intern at the radio station, get some perspective on her. But let's go to the phone lines, um, Adam, and uh, let's take some phone calls. You're on the air. Hello, good morning. What's your name, caller? Just, I, I'm sorry, I should always said. ask that. I apologize. My name is Zed. What is it? Zed. Zed. How are, Zed, thank you for calling. Okay, I just want to say uh, <clears throat> my sympathy to the people got killed, the three people got killed in, in North Carolina. I wish this never happened. Yeah. I'm I'm not a Muslim, but I wish this never happened. Uh, I don't think they deserve it. I don't know what happened, but again, I'm sorry. This I wish this never happened. Second Does it thing, bother you that they focus on them being Muslim? Um, right, you know, because as an Arab, I'm Christian, and I think this could happen to any Arab anybody. because the guy isn't educated to really understand Muslim, Christian, Arabs, whatever. They look at us all as a and non Arabs from the Middle East. They lump us all in one big pot, don't they? I wish we all we all one family. I wish this never happened. Yeah, I it's horrible. Add, I just want to add this that um you were saying that this is hate crime and I yeah. accept it. I believe it. But I want to say, I want to say to, yes, to all, to everybody, that um, the non-Muslim, non-Muslim has been victim from the Muslim at least 20 times more than 
the Muslim at least but 20 let times. Me ask you, though, let me just ask you about that because let me, let me, let me I mean, here we are this. talking about, explain. you know, Americans let me, let me just, who attack let me just us. Just explain this, my friend. Let me no, just no, no, no. I just want to ask you a question. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to criticize you. I know that there's that feeling out there. And I, and I think it's a legitimate issue that should be addressed. Um, if you look at yes, the record. Christian Arabs are, we, we're discriminated against in the Middle East. But do you blame Muslims for that or crazy people, extremists? You know what I mean? I blame, I blame the teaching of the religion because the teaching of the religion. That's too uh, far. It, it, Don't you think that's courage. going too far? I know. All right, listen, thank you for the call, though. I appreciate it. Set, let, I want to go to Noor, uh, Gally before we take our next phone call, um, and just welcome, uh, Noor Gally, who's an intern at, uh, WNZK and Radio Ballading and U.S. Arab Radio. Layla Al Hosseini has this massive conglomerate of commercial, you know, businesses. She's so successful, you know, and her radio show is one of the top ones. Uh, you know, in the Detroit region. Noor, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Tell me, tell us a little bit about yourself, and and uh, you wear a hijab, correct? Yes, I do. And how did? What was your reaction to this? Do you believe it's a hate crime? You know, does absolutely. it make you worry? How do How do you feel about I it? I absolutely believe that it was a hate crime. I don't buy any of that um, mm -hmm. talk on the media saying that it was about a parking space. It's very clear that the um, that Hicks was very anti-religion and had severe hate for all religions, including Islam. And I don't probably more against Islam and probably, Arab Christians yeah, than than uh, Christianity. You know, when he says he's an atheist, a lot of people were excusing what he did, saying, "Well, he's not a he doesn't represent America or white people." And I'm going, "No, that that's not true. I think he does represent the inner hatred that's growing in this country." You know, that needs to be stopped. There are a lot of good Americans, a lot of good white people, but they need to speak out, right? Just the way they say to us, we have to speak out against ex extremist Islam. Okay, well, they need to speak out against extremists in white America, don't you think? Yes, but I You're do. You're too believe... nice. You come across too nice. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the screamer. No, You'll be the nice person. I'm not nice. But, yes, you are. Um, but go ahead. I do believe that there are a lot of white Americans that yeah. are not okay with this. I know I we actually um I did um I participated in um a lot of uh in an event for uh, what happened on my campus and we educated a lot of the people about what was going on and a lot of them cared. A lot of the white people they they a, did good. A lot of they they were they were really sad about it and they were like that shouldn't happen and I don't agree with it. There were a lot of people that like stood by us and they took our side. I have a lot of white American friends on my campus and they don't, they always tell me like, you guys, I don't understand the media, why they make it seem like you guys are so crazy and you guys are such bad people, you guys are so nice and you live such nice lives and it doesn't make sense. So I don't, I don't believe in generalizations and I don't do, think that anybody should just make it a racial thing or blame one group of people. Do we do enough though as Arabs and Muslims to uh, engage American society. I know some of us do, but do you think the community overall does enough? No, I Maybe not. we contribute to this, you know, f a paranoia that some Americans have. I you know, think. maybe we don't do enough. I'm not saying we're responsible for it, but do we, do, do you think we do enough as Arabs and Muslims in America no, to be I American? Don't. I think that we need to stand together with people who have the same ideals and morals and are not like are not racist like we're not racist and there are american people who are not like white americans who are not racist and we need to reach out to them and get on the same level and isolate ourselves from those radicals and those crazy people that represent that do not represent our religion but are like so highlighted in the media can we have a discussion with like our last caller who i think our last caller is a decent person um, but and he has this feeling that you know Christians are persecuted in the Muslim world, um, and I think he broad brushes it too much. Though I think it really is an issue, but it seems like when we bring the issue up, no matter at what level, moderately or extremely, everybody gets mad. People, I get people yell at me, Ray, why do you bring up Muslim Christian issues? 
isn't that something that we should talk about? I mean, there is a there is an issue, um, just like there is in any society. But isn't there a way to talk about it in a productive way to address it? What do you think? You want my honest opinion? There yes. Is, yes. There is nothing in Islam that allows discrimination against other religions. It teaches coexistence. The basis of Islam is peace and coexistence with other people. There are people who do not practice Islam clearly as right. they see what's going on overseas and over here. And like, there are people who say that they're Muslim, but they don't practice real Islam. There's nothing in Islam that says that you should discriminate against Christians and that you need, or Christians or right. Jewish people or anybody. It preaches coexistence to the core. And but do you think that we, shouldn't we be speaking to people like this caller who is from the Middle East, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and trying to understand why does he have this anger and fear against Muslims? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I get a lot of pushback when I bring this up, and I know that, you know, that's not directly our topic, but in a way it is kind of related no, it needs to what to happened in Chapel Hill. It needs to be um, You sound about. like a very reasoned person, and of course you would be because you're friends of Layla El Hosseini, who's probably one of the most reasoned people I know. So... I, I know that you're not an extremist, no, but we I'm do not. have some extremists in both sides, Christian Arabs and Muslim Arabs and the Muslim community. We need to do a better job of separating them from the mainstream, yeah, I and, think. In every religion or group yes. or race or anything, there will be extreme people, and there will be people like radicals who just make everybody look bad. And unfortunately, they're the ones that get media attention, not the normal people. All right, we're taking calls at 248-557-3300. Noor Galley is an intern at the radio station over there. We're going to take a, our last break here at uh, uh, the Arab Daily News Radio on U.S. Arab Radio and Radio Ballet. I think we have one more break. Let's take that break, and then we have one more caller who's waiting patiently on the line, and we'll take that call and talk with them. Just hang on, everybody, and we'll be right back. Noor, thank you so much for your two cents there. We really appreciate it. I'm Ray Hanania. We will be right back right after these messages. Are you going to start up a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Najee Aboud at 248-442-9292. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Najee Aboud now, 248 248- 442-9292. New concept products and designs. The trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of 75000 or more. For more information, visit newconceptproducts.com. 248-44. It's never too early to get your child on the right track. From their first words to first grade, Dreamy Children's Center in Troy works closely with parents to provide an experience that goes beyond early education. The highly qualified and experienced staff use a variety of programs that can help nurture important personality traits like responsibility, independence, problem solving, motivation, and respect. They also have educational programs ranging from preschooling for infants, toddlers, transitional toddlers, and pre-K to Montessori-approved programs and bilingual curriculums for young children. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner with snacks in between, and can also arrange for after-school pickups. Dreamy Children's Center in Troy is located at 37373 Dequinder, just above 16 Mile Road, and can be found on Facebook at Dreamy Children's Center. Ask about the free preschool program. Call today, 248 680 9170-248-680-9170. And welcome back to the Arab Daily News Radio here at WNZK AM 690 in Greater Detroit and WDMV AM 700 in Greater Washington, D.C. Uh, here on U.S. Arab Radio and Radio Bellity, the foundation of the Layla El Hussein Empire. She should have her own show on TV the Layla El Husseini empire, because it is an empire. It's growing, a media empire. Let's go right to the phone lines and uh, welcome callers. And give us your first name, caller. You're on the air here at the Arab Daily News website, uh, radio. Hi, Ray. This is Osama. Hi, Osama. How are you? Thank you for Good. calling. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to hear your voice again. Yeah, I'm going to be here the second Friday of every month. I, I used to do the show every Friday morning, but um, I'll tell you, my work schedule changed in Chicago. It's early here, so it made it rough, but I can manage every second Friday, and I'll promote it on the Facebook page 
and we'll be back on Friday the 13th in March again. Can you imagine? To Friday the 13th. That's great. Uh, you know, you're an actor. We cannot uh, stay without. I can tell you that. Say um, that again. You are an asset that we cannot oh, thank you know, you. <laughs> stay away from. Some people would just refer to me as the first three letters of asset, but that's it, you know. What are you oh, no. Do? <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> I'm only a partial asset. <laughs> some people. Anyways. Um, but what, uh, what do yeah. you think of that killing? I mean, I don't know if you're Christian. You're, are you Muslim? And, you know, everybody's outraged, aren't they? And yeah, you think I, I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. And I have a distant cousin uh, that we're very close that she goes to that university. Wow. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very sad that what happened. I can tell you I've been living here in this country for uh, a little over 30 years. Um I, I never encountered, well, I, I shouldn't say, maybe I encountered five times where I, where I was discriminated against, but that's like one, less than 1%, uh, you know, of the time that I was here. Most of the time, people are very nice, they're very courteous, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to see this. I mean, hate is always, it's, it's always going to be there. We cannot but don't you prevent think, it. Listen, don't you think that the reason you weren't picked on, I think, and this is just my, uh, you know, uh, theory that you're not a, you're not in the front of, you know, for example, like, you know, Americans that just a lot of these haters out there, they just don't go after most of the time regular people. They look for the people that are out front, like, you know, I'm in the media. I get attacked so much by uh, people that hate Muslims and hate Arabs. It's unbelievable. And then I get attacked by some Arab extremists and Muslim extremists, you know, that just hate anybody who's quote-unquote a moderate. So, but maybe, you, do you don't sense, you know, like when you're walking among regular Americans that they don't look at you and say, oh, your name is Osama? Don't don't they go crazy when they, they hear that? Well, no, I mean, they do, but, you know, I mean, to, to, to hate someone or to be against someone is one thing, and then to bring it out and act upon it is another thing. You know, yeah. sometimes, I mean, hate and love, this is something, I mean, people got to understand, something we cannot control. You know, I mean, you hate someone, you hate someone. Yeah. But to go out bad, and though. kill them or, you know, hurt them in any way, I mean, that's where you have to draw the line, you know. Um, All right. And then in regard to your, uh, to I, I believe his name was Ted. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, most, the caller, you, know, you mean. The, the caller, correct. Yeah. Um, most Muslims, you know, just suffered more casualties than Christians did. And, yeah. uh, you know, throughout the history, you know, we've been occupied, we've been, yeah. uh, you know, uh, waged, uh, you know, wars upon twice unjust, I believe, to Iraq and now in Syria and Yemen. And, and these, these groups, the radical groups that they call themselves Muslims, I bet you anything they can't even recite one verse of the Quran yeah. directly. I, 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 can, I can guarantee you and, that. And I, I like to tell Arab Christians who are, have this I- issue, and it, listen, I think the concern is legitimate. I think it's wrong, though, to blame all Muslims. You know, I think that there are some, as you, and I agree with you, they're not really Muslims. You know, no, ISIS not. that, that right. massacred those, uh, and beheaded those people and, and burned that poor man alive, the soldier, I think it's terrible, and well, we need to address it, and there is a smart way to do it, but we just shouldn't get upset right away, you know, a knee-jerk upset. You know, when somebody brings it up, people really go crazy. Listen, I, Osama, i got to let you go. i got one more phone call. I want to just bring them on, and uh, because we're limited, we're off the air in a few minutes, all right? But thank you so much for calling. I'll be back in four weeks on the second Friday of uh, uh, the month, March 13th. Thanks, man. Let's go to the next caller. Um, our last caller, and uh, you have the final word. Give us your name. Sam. Hi, Sam. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you for calling. No problem. I was just listening to Noor. She was saying there are no hate in an Islamic book. But I will I will ask Noor uh, to read uh, uh, Surah al 29 and Surah al uh, Ahzab 26 and 27. Sam, let me ask you a question. Isn't there hate in the Bible, and, and too? Jewish and, I, and Christianity. I understand, but listen, do you think it makes, do you think attacking Islam, the entire religion, because people do that to the Bible, 
There are passages in the Bible about slaughtering, you know, and murdering innocent people, and it doesn't matter. Can't they say the same thing about us? Why okay, can't we okay, look at say, it and single okay, out? You okay, don't you accept say, the idea that it's so the extremist as, as, Muslims? So if it's the Bible uh, wrong, that means the Quran is wrong too? Listen, there may be passages that definitely had a meaning, you know, 2,000 or 1,400 years ago in the Quran, and I bet there are passages in the Bible from 2,000 and so, 5,000 so years is, ago Quran that is are no wrong good too, for this, but... Quran, Quran is no good for this time now? Listen, I... Where I think you're broad stroking and blaming all Muslims is wrong. To blame I'm Islam blame is wrong. No, 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 sorry. As a I'm Christian sorry, from the I'm Middle not East, Muslim. I think it I'm doesn't not help. Muslim I think at all. Only I'm blaming Quran. I'm blaming Quran, not Muslims. No. I'm blaming Quran. Well, okay, but then you should, you need to come across and be smart about how you address Muslims and say to Muslims, Listen, I know most Muslims are good people, and I think the majority are. They're crazy people, as we just saw in every religion. This guy, you know, is a white American. He claims to be an atheist murdering, you know, two Muslim people. But listen, Sam, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. All right? No problem. No problem, but a good point. Let's take one last call. I think, Adam, do we got one more? We'll rush him through. You're on the air. Yeah. Hi, uh... I What's your name? To, caller? I'm uh, Bashar. Hey, Bashar, uh, thank you for yeah. calling. You're yeah, our I, last I'm, caller. you got three minutes, Max. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm from Iraq, you know, and yeah. I'm wondering why um, I, I listen to your show and I like it a lot. And I just want to know your opinion about uh, what they did to the Chaldeans and they killed them. I think it's terrible. You know, they, I think it's they, a horrible uh, massacre. All, and I, you know, and I, I have, agree that there are... Uh, governments and extremists in the Islamic religion, but there are also extremists in the Christian religion and also extremists in the Jewish religion. I don't want to paint all Muslims as being bad. We're not because I don't that, think they're right? all bad. Yeah, I think there are true. incidents where you are right. Christians, Chaldeans, were, were being massacred, and Christians are being massacred. I only got sixty seconds left. I got to let you go, Bashar. Okay. I I promise you that I'll raise this as an issue in a future show. I think it's worth talking about, and I'm sorry that we don't have more time to continue. I want to thank everybody for listening. This is Ray Hanania. You go to my website at thearabdailynews.com, or just look up rayhanania.com, and you'll be able to get information. I want to thank Leila al Hosseini and everybody at WNZK AM 690 in Greater Detroit, WDMV AM 700 in Greater Washington for listening to U.S. Arab Radio, Radio Ballady, and the Arab Daily News Radio. I'm Ray Hanania. I'll see you the second Friday of each month. Have a great month, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.